Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, and as you guys voted, this video is about all of the Hermes offers that I have turned down over the years. So I'll go through the year, the specs of the offer, the rationale behind turning it down, and what I ultimately got instead. Just for fun, I have done a couple of handbag exchanges, so I'll throw in the bags that I exchanged and what I exchanged them for. So let's start with the very first Hermes bag that I requested all the way back in 2020. 17, I wanted a red or a gray Evelyn TPM. At the time, I heard this bag was going to be discontinued, so I reached out to my SA, who I hadn't spoken to in over a year, and asked her for this bag. She didn't have anything, but a few days later, she called me and said that she had a black Epsom Evelyn TPM. And because I thought this bag would be imminently discontinued, I accepted. But the truth was, I didn't want a black mini cross body bag with silver hardware because I already had a Chanel black caviar mini with silver hardware so an Evelyn in that same combination would be redundant however because I thought the bag was going to be discontinued I accepted but I told my essay if a gray or red came into store please let me know within a couple of days she contacted me and said that she got both a red and a gray she held both for me until I came into store I asked her if I could can exchange and she said of course so thankfully I had not used that black Evelyn TPM when I tried on both the red and the gray the red had a strong orange undertone so that was not for me but the gray was Etan and that's one of my favorite Hermes colors and I happily exchanged my black Evelyn TPM for the Etan I have zero regrets about that exchange I am so happy that I did not keep the black Evelyn because of the color but also because of the leather. Even though that wasn't a concern at the time, I like that the Evelyn is a squishy soft bag and I don't think I would have enjoyed it as much over the years if it had been in Epsom leather. And after that, I did not buy another Hermes bag until 2019 when I asked my essay for a black Birkin 30. And after about a month, she offered me a black Birkin 30 Togo leather with rose gold hardware, which I rejected. Instead, I got this bag which is my black Birkin 30 in Epsom leather with yellow gold hardware. This is by far one of my most used Hermes bags. I have zero regrets. I know it may be super surprising to many of you because that is a fantastic bag. However, for me, I really wanted just the regular gold hardware. You may or may not know I'm not the biggest fan of rose gold hardware. It's not that I dislike it, but nine times out of ten, I would will pick yellow gold over rose gold unless the rose gold really brings out the best in the color of the bag. There are a few examples where I prefer the rose gold over the yellow gold, such as the color Etan. I prefer rose gold over yellow gold specifically for that color. So at that time, my essay was a little surprised that I rejected the rose gold, but she understood, said, no problem. If you want yellow gold, we will get you yellow gold. I'm so happy that I made that decision especially because my favorite winter coat is a black down Burberry coat with lots of yellow gold accents on the buttons and on the sleeves. I love the way that particular coat looks with my black Birkin. I wear that coat so often. I'm sure the rose gold would look fine as well, but I'm very, very happy with my decision. So next I'll tell you about a really quick exchange that I did for this bag, which is the Kelly 28 Cellier in Etang. I originally originally had it in gold hardware. I go into the story in depth in that unboxing video, but as I mentioned before, I prefer the color Etan with either palladium or rose gold hardware. So I sheepishly went back to my essay and said, if you can get me this bag with palladium hardware, because of course, as of right now, Kelly still don't come with rose gold hardware. Within the exchange period, I would love to switch this bag out for the same exact bag with palladium hardware and within a week she made that happen and zero regrets with this exchange especially because this particular gray bag I really wanted it to look gray and the palladium hardware really brings out the gray whereas gold hardware on the color Etan in Epsom leather really brings out the brown undertones which I really didn't want that's just a matter of personal preference it's not that I prefer palladium hardware I just have a a 
preference for certain color hardware combinations. So let's fast forward to 2021, which if you follow the brand, you'll know was a particularly difficult year to be offered bags, not just quota bags, any bags. And of course, this is the year that I chose to ask my essay for two of the most difficult bags to be offered, the Kelly 25 and the Birkin 25. If you follow my channel, you'll know that I got a Kelly 25 Retourne pretty early in the year before things got super difficult. But when I requested my Birkin 25 later in the year, bags were much harder to come by. However, I did eventually get this Birkin 25 in Togo leather with gold hardware in the color E2. In the unboxing video for this bag, I told you that I rejected two Birkin 30s, both in Togo leather, one black with palladium hardware, and the other in the color Etan with rose gold hardware. Now, the black with silver was pretty easy to reject. I already have a black Birkin 30 just with gold hardware. However, the Etan with rose gold hardware was particularly hard to reject. This bag is a unicorn bag for many people. I love the Birkin in the 30 size. And as I mentioned previously, Etan is one of my favorite Hermes colors. But at this point, I already had my dream colors in the 30 size. And I knew if I accepted that bag, it wouldn't get much use. But the main reason is that I wanted to try out the Birkin 25. So as hard as it was to reject that offer, I'm so glad I did it. My essay wasn't surprised that I rejected these. Quite honestly, I think she just felt bad that my Birkin 25 offer was taking so long and really just wanted to offer me something. But I was happy to wait longer to get what I really wanted, which of course was this Birkin 25. Now, the day that I went into store to get this bag, I'm not not sure I mentioned this in the unboxing video, but I actually rejected another Birkin 25 in Etan with gold hardware. So essentially my essay gave me a choice if I wanted Etoup or Etan. It was a pretty easy choice for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I have two bags in Etan already. And secondly, as I mentioned before, I don't really love the color Etan with gold hardware. I prefer it with rose gold or palladium. So let's fast forward to the beginning of this year for the next bag that I rejected, which was a beautiful Kelly pochette in swift leather with gold hardware in the color Blue France. Now, interestingly, this bag came completely out of the blue. When I got this offer, I had not actually requested any bags from my essay for this year. In fact, I hadn't gone into the store or seen my essay in over six months. It was a total surprise. Kelly pochettes are not super common bags, so my essay just wanted to check in with me to see if this is the kind of bag that I'd be interested in. This was an easy no for me, no regrets for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I'm not a clutch person, so this would be a strictly evening bag. And even in an evening bag, I would like the option of a strap if possible. And secondly, if I were to decide to get a clutch as an evening bag, blue would not be my first choice, although I love blues and this was a particularly beautiful blue. But in an evening bag, I would just prefer a a white or off-white colored bag. In my last unboxing video, I told you guys as a result of me rejecting this Kelly pochette, my essay asked me what I was interested in putting on my wish list this year. In my last unboxing video, I gave you guys the details of what happened next, so I won't go into that so much, but I did mention that I gave my essay three possibilities, the last of which was a bag in the rose sakura color. So as a result, of knowing that I wanted a light pink bag, my essay offered me this bag, which is a Constance 18 in mauve sylvester in chev leather with palladium hardware. However, the kicker was that it was a verso bag and the inside was this beautiful red. I cannot remember the color name, but it was gorgeous. And this was a super hard bag to turn down. And of all the bags on this list, list, I will say guys, this is the only one that I regret turning down. So I'll explain my rationale for turning it down. Firstly, I was a little concerned about the 18 size not being versatile enough for daytime use. But after I rejected the bag, I realized that I'm at a point in my collection where I don't really need bags to be as versatile as I once needed them to be. So 10 years ago, I needed my bags to be jacks of all trades because I only 
had a few bags, and so a lot of the bags that I own really needed to do double, triple duty. I don't have that issue now. I'm at the point where I can just buy bags purely because I love them. But the major reason that I rejected this bag was that I wanted to hold out for the bag that was my first choice, which again, if you watch my last unboxing, you'll know was the Kelly 25 Cellier. My essay did tell me that because the Constance is not a quota bag at my boutique, I could have this. And if my Kelly 25 came in a week later, I could have that as well. However, I just had a sneaking suspicion that although my essay would be willing to give me both of those bags, it might be a little difficult to convince the store manager to offer someone a Kelly 25 Cellier so soon after they just got a Constance 18 in such a highly coveted color. So I held out and my essay made the Kelly 25 Cellier happen for me, but I'll be honest, this is definitely the bag that got away and I told my essay that I regretted my decision so she knows that I very much would like this exact bag if it ever comes into the boutique again. Putting aside for a minute the fact that I do regret rejecting this offer, I'm so glad that I even got the offer and was able to see the color Mauve Sylvester in person because I realized that this as opposed to Rose Sakura is actually a better suited pink for me. It's light and sophisticated without being washed out so I am truly grateful for this offer. I'll give an honorable mention to some pretty coveted shoes and accessories that my essay has offered me such as the Wolfskin Chipre and Oran sandals in really beautiful neutral colors that she knew I would love. I was so tempted by both of these but I had to have a really honest conversation with myself about where exactly I would be wearing these because the streets of New York City would absolutely tear up both of these shoes. So I thought about buying them for vacations but they'd probably feel icky once sand got in them. So then I thought maybe I can just use them by the pool but then I thought about the wool once they got soaking wet. Not to mention that when it's hot and humid the last thing I want on my feet is wool. So then the only reasonable place that I could think to wear either of these sandals was essentially around my house and that just seemed like a waste to me. So that was a pass and over the years my essay has offered me coin purses and card cases in really popular colors like the 5p pink that she told me was a very sought after color but I wasn't really in the market for SLGs at that time although I will say right about now a card case would come in really handy. Believe it or not guys I don't own even one SLG from Hermes. Not a Calvi, not a Bastia, nothing. But this video would be super long if I talked about all of those things as well. So I wanted to have a discussion around the general topic of rejecting bags at Hermes, especially quota bags. I'll tell you my ideas around it, but I'm very curious to know what you guys think. It is a bit controversial. There are people on social media that will tell you if you get offered a quota bag, take it. Doesn't really matter what it is. You can always sell it. Accepting offers is an important aspect of building the relationship with the essay and the boutique. And I don't doubt that that can be true for some people at some boutiques. But I can really only talk from my own experience. As a long-term customer, I will say that for me, rejecting offers is an important aspect of building my relationship with my store manager and my boutique. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Firstly, you're able to communicate your wishes not just with the offers that you accept, but with the offers that you reject. In other words, if you really want a neutral color Kelly 25 Cellier and you keep accepting offers for brightly colored Birkin 30s or pastel Kelly 28s, I feel that essentially you're communicating to your essay that that neutral Kelly 25 is really negotiable. And in fact, you really love these other bags perhaps just as much. So when a neutral Kelly 25 Cellier comes to store, yes, it may still be on your wish list, but it's also on the wish list of someone like me who's basically rejected everything else and is waiting for their dream bag. Now that is an absolute gamble because what could happen and what happens all the time for people like me who are extremely particular is that we can very well end up with 
absolutely nothing. But that's a gamble that I'm willing to take because I'm just unwilling to settle. And sure, all of those bags that I rejected, I would absolutely enjoy them had I accepted those offers, but none of those bags would take the place of the bag that I actually wanted. So they would essentially delay me getting my dream bag. Secondly, I think rejecting offers, especially really good offers, if you have a very good relationship with your essay and your boutique, results in better long-term offers. I think at this point, my essay really curates the bags that she offers me. She knows that I'm not going to accept random bags in colors and sizes that I'd never wear, so she doesn't even bother to offer me those bags. Because of all of the bags that I rejected, she really thinks about what I would like before she offers me something. So essentially it saves her time because then I'm one less person that she needs to communicate and offer to. And I prefer it this way because honestly, it's not that much fun saying no to your Hermes essay. The final reason that I think that rejecting offers, especially really good offers. So keep in mind that I rejected two Birkins with rose gold hardware, a mauve Sylvester Verso bag in Chev leather. These are all highly coveted bags bags that sell at a premium in the resale market. It's my belief, kind of a conspiracy theory, you guys know I love my conspiracy theories, that rejecting these kinds of offers when they really don't suit your needs solidifies in the boutique manager's mind that this person is not a reseller. No reseller in their right mind rejects those kinds of offers. Even people that aren't resellers and genuinely love the bags may have taken any one of those bags knowing very well that they could make a quick buck. And quite honestly, I think part of the rationale for Hermes having these unofficial pre-spend requirements is that it deters casual flipping of bags. So if you've already output 20 grand and then the bag costs 10 grand, even if you're able to sell the bag for 30,000, at that point it would be pointless because you're not really making a profit. And so boutique managers are able to deter these casual bag flips in that way. So essentially, I think that's one of the reasons why the manager at my boutique is willing to release these bags to me without me having to jump through hoops to get them. And I'm able to get offers without spending a ton of money because no one at my boutique is worried about me flipping bags. If that was my intention, I would not have rejected any of those highly coveted offers despite them not being what I wanted and made a quick profit. So those are all the bag offers that I have declined over the years. Let me know if any of them surprised you and had you scratching your head in confusion, throwing tomatoes at me on your screen, thinking what in the world was she thinking rejecting that bag? I'm very curious to know which of these bag offers would you have definitely taken yourself? Which would you have also passed on? But also for the ones that you would have accepted, do you at least understand my rationale for turning them down? And of course, if you're an Hermes customer, I'd love to know which bags you've turned down and why. I'm so excited to continue this conversation in the comments. This should be a fun one. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. That would make my day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.